Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Today, the 2nd of December, 2022, Peggy Brenner is going to tell us about Herb Welch's The Kennebago. I think I've got that right. She'll correct me if I'm wrong in a few minutes. And the weekly tip, we're going to talk about dubbing loop options. This time, it'll be split thread with hackle. We're the Beaties from Boise, Idaho. And let me uh, bring Peggy in here and spotlight her as well. Peggy Brenner resides in Florida, close to some of the best saltwater and freshwater fly fishing. She has been tying for several decades, with her specialty being flies that fish well and for art. Peggy started tying basic trout and saltwater flies, then progressed to classic main streamers at the United Fly Tires and now classic salmon flies with a one-year apprentice through the NH Council of Arts traditional arts program. I assume NH stands for New Hampshire. Peggy uh, is joining us to uh, Fly Tying Friday. And Peggy, it's all yours. And we're just dying to learn about Herb Welch's pattern. Oh, good. Um, yeah, the Kennebago, it's, um, it's a streamer pattern, feather wings. And it's one of, there's a group of patterns that he did that were named for either rivers or streams. In this case, it's the Kennebago stream and an Indian tribe, it was all the leaders, okay? And there's a dozen of them in the in the group. Someday I'm gonna, I hope to tie all 12. Um, Herb Welch is kind of one of my favorite guys. He was a taxidermist, he was a main guide. He also studied at the Sorbonne in Paris and studied fine arts. He was a painter amongst other things. So a very interesting person, his flies show that. I um uh, I really like this one because it's a good lead on into salmon flies. You get your body work down. Kennebago streamer has um <clears throat> was originally done on an Alcock hook, which is no longer made. So I'm going to be using a Gaelic Supreme Mike Martinique Rangely streamer hook, and I'm using a size four, uh, nine no eight extra long. I'm going to use white thread. The tail is just going to be a few orange hackle fibers. The butt is gonna be peacock curl. Then it's gonna have some light blue silk on the rear third of the body, another peacock curl butt, and then the rest of the hook is flat gold tinsel. It's going to have a silver oval tinsel rib over that gold body. Um, more the throat, which in Herb Welch flies, we only do one throat, it's gonna be orange hackle fibers. And the wing is going to be red hackle flanked by badger hackle. Now, I pre-made my wings this afternoon. We'll get started. Um, and then I remembered that, oh, yes, you can tie these with badger hackle that has been dyed red. And whiting does that in whiting American rooster saddle. So I found one in a closet this afternoon. So I'm going to actually tie this both ways for you. I pre-made my wings. So when you do it with the badger on the top, the red shows through. And when it's wet, it really shows through. It's quite beautiful. It's a very attractive fly. All right, let's get some white thread going. I'm just going to cover the hook with a good base of thread. Um, See. With all of these streamers, you want to start, I start, uh, I'm a good quarter inch back from the eye of the hook. You want to start planning now for where you're going to put the wing on, okay? Otherwise, it will cock up because you could have a crooked, crooked little bed for it to sit on. Gosh. Uh, just, a, yeah. just a comment, Peggy. Your tools yeah. in the background, were you a surgeon in another life? No, actually, I wasn't. I did work for a pediatric surgeon for quite a few years, and we used to do research projects together, and I used to do the photography, so I always would photograph her set, and then popped her flies. I got some of those scissors because they're really nice, and I like the magnetic background, but I keep it over there to keep it away from my laptop, because that would be the death of a laptop. Yeah, no kidding. Well, anyway, it all lined up in a row there looks good. 
They, uh, that's so I, I'm missing a whole set of tools. I don't know what happened to them. I um, haven't seen them for close to a month. All right, let's put a couple of wraps here. One, two, three. Yeah, I'm going to keep that up there. What I'm going to do is run my little piece of peacock up under the butt, okay, because I'm going to put the um, floss right here. So I'm just going to run it up, and it's going to just build up the hook underneath a little bit. Let me just find that. There it is. There we go. Yeah, and then we'll trim off our extra here. And then we're going to do the floss goes up the front of the uh, body. I'm not floss the tinsel, and I'm going to do a single layer. And this is a number ten tinsel, so it's pretty wide. Um, and it's just a matter, we have just have to kind of keep it even. And this is going to be a Lagarten oval, um, extra strong, small uh, rib that I put on. Whoops, I guess you have to see it like that. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to take the extra off, get the thread. Wet it. There we go. Put that aside for a few minutes. Now we'll put the gold in place. And I'm going to, when I bring my thread up to the front, I'm going to come up a little bit further than where I started. Each time I come up maybe four or five wraps more towards the eye of the hook. And what I'm doing is I'm building a bed for the um, wing to go on. And, um, There we go, we got it. I always put a little half hitch before I let go of the tinsel because if you let go of it too soon and you don't have it all tied in, it will just take off on you and make the biggest mess you've ever seen. And this is a little bit loose. I'll just tighten it down like that. There we go. Then I've got my rib coming up. And there's no set on streamers, there's no set number of ribs or spacing, and you can actually do them in either direction. Um, in other words, wind them in reverse, okay, or the way I'm doing it. Um, what you want to do though is just make sure you have a little bit of whatever your body material is. You want a nice, even 
amount of that showing. There we go. Cool. Now. Put a little bit of going to carry on here. While you're putting that glue away, we have a question from the chat. Sure. Jonathan wants to know, did you make your magnetic stand? No, I bought it from a guy named Piero Sestino. He's an Italian salmon fly tire that ties in hand. And he actually, he's a, by trade, he's a quality manager for a helicopter company. So he's pretty picky about his tools that he uses. And when you tie both streamers and salmon flies, when you have to trim like stuff away underneath the hook and stuff like that, you need a really sharp point that is lined up and everything. And you can't buy that for some reason. So he just makes his own and now he's got a separate little company. I mean, his, um, I have the bodkin that he makes and it's like a dental tool. It's uh, sharp as they come. And it's all marked off so you can make your um, gut eyes and stuff like that. Everything is pretty, pretty well done. All right, now let's put this first layer on. When I put my um, beards on or throat, what I do is I put it on as a bunch and then I, sp I spread it out with my thumbnail. Um, you could also do this with like a hen hackle and put a collar on if you want to get really simple, but. There. Yeah, that could use another bunch. That was a little bit skinny, so we'll go from here. Get a little bit more up there. Yeah, let's put another little sponge on top. There, now. Now we'll put our wings on. I made these wings ahead of time and I did them using that UV uh, solar ease. I just started using this less than a year ago. I mean, everybody seems to have had it forever. And I never thought you could do streamer wings. And I was at the Atlanta show doing a demo when I was getting ready to use my usual stuff and take like a 15 minute break. But I had all these people standing there. So you can't just leave in front of 20 people, right? And the guy next to me, he was using some other kind of UV cure. And he just, oh, watch this. And he cured those wings in like three seconds. He had them ready to go on. Now I, as a matter of habit, I always put my back wing on first, okay? Because to me, that's just easier to line up with the one in the front. What you wanna do when you're putting the wing on, just take like one wrap, don't, some people take like 20 wraps around the wing. And then they wonder why it's all over the place. Well, it's because you got too much, um, too much pressure on it. Now, let me just go down here. Now I'm gonna change thread color on us. Get rid of this. All right. Now let's just wet my fingers a bit and tame all these feathers. 
there. All right, and let's see, we'll put a jungle cock eye in here. And let's see what I have, I have one there. We're gonna use the jungle cock. I have, um, this is the real thing. I had a guy call, I've had several people call me in the last couple of weeks looking for jungle cock. Apparently not every shop carries it anymore. And wanting to know if I would sell some. And at first I thought, well, that's terrible that I'll run out. But then I counted what I have and realized they have 32 pelts. So I guess I do have a little extra. But I also found a nice source of an artificial, which I like to use as well. There we go. There we go. Now. What I do, if you'll notice the jungle cot has some lines on it or little spots. Let's see, let me get my scissors here. We got the brown part that we want to leave intact and we got the white and then there's a little black dot. I tie in right at the base of that black dot and the white. And if you, if you picked your two feathers the same size, they go on well and they match every time. And we'll cut all of this out of there. If you can, would you speak a little bit to how you build your wings? Oh, yes. Let me, um, actually, what I'll do is I'll build a separate set of wings, okay? And I can, um, I can glue them on the little piece of paper I use, and that will work pretty good. Uh, let's see. Wait, finish. I didn't know. Ah, Go ahead and finish right. what you're doing, then you can do the wings later. Yeah. Okay. We'll do a whole separate. It's building the wings is kind of the one of the mysteries of it, I guess, as well as the length of the wing. And uh, we can cover that too, because there's two or more different ways to tie these. Um, Herb Welch was in fact a fisherman and a guide, whereas Carrie Stevens was a hat maker and a fly tire and rarely fished. And so her flies are actually, they drape in the back. The whole first third is glued together, okay? The wing is glued to the body and all sorts of stuff. And um, because her feeling was that, and she was probably right with this, is that the front part of the fish does not move. It's the tail that moves to propel the fish. There we go. Now, let me just put a little of this black on the head. See how we have those little things sticking out? We're going to take care of them the easy, more modern way here. And the light, there we go. From what I understand with all these various UV cure things, the light is the key to it and they're all different strengths. Now, I don't know if that's true or whether they're all just trying to sell you an expensive light because I do know when the batteries in this thing get low, it doesn't work as well. There we go. Yeah. We can put that guy right there. Now we'll build a wing, okay? And I have some red hackles. We're gonna take two red hackles that match or pretty well match. We want them to be the same length and kind of the same shape, you know, the same width and everything. It's hard to do, and these are strung hackles, so they're not really that great. That's half a wing. All right, I have my little piece of paper down here, so I'm gonna sit them down. Now I have to find in this bag, with this strung hackle, um, this is a whole one. This is actually still strung together. I have a really nice, it's a basket full of badger. 
nice badger from uh, Whiting. And my dog pulled the string out of it one day. And so I now have like 10,000 feathers that need to be matched. <laughs> If you have a day when you have nothing to do, like if you're in an area where it snows, you can actually just pick wing feathers all day. Now this is a nice set too. And they match pretty tight. Okay, well, let's see if I got this right. I'm gonna pull off that rough stuff again. Now some people cut this, the fluffy stuff off the bottom and other people pull it off. I just pull it off. Sometimes the stem splits on you a little bit and sometimes it doesn't. So we're gonna take a red feather, put the good side up, and then I've got a uh, badger, good side up. We're gonna match them together. That red is a little bit longer, so I'm gonna match the tips, okay? Um, there we go, not too bad. If you don't match the tips and you have one wing a little bit like, say, a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch longer than the other one, and what happens is when you go to fish the fly, that one wing that's a little bit heavier is going to cause the other one to spin like a top. And it'll make your leader um, just spin up, make it, make it a rope is what happens. And I actually had to try that. On the stream, I had to find out. When I first started tying these, I actually didn't fish and didn't know that. So my husband being the engineer said, oh, you should really fish that one with the uneven wings. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it came up the line and everything. I was like, oh, okay. Now we got both wings together here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take both sides, put the stems together. Let's make sure we got them both the same length, okay? Because there we go, good. Look on both sides. And I have a good side and a bad side, so we'll put them like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, now I separate them. Now, another, uh, what I do, I leave at least an inch of stem on there because that's like a little handle that you're holding the wing by. It's also how you adjust it where it's sitting on the uh, hook. And if you get it too short, now I'm gonna put these both on a piece of paper with the dull side up. And I'm gonna take this fancy glue here and I'm gonna UV these things together. I won't put quite as much as before. Peggy, you, you put all four wings together uh, facing each other to, to get everything matched up the way you yeah, want it. Yeah, and then I separate them. And I lay them out on a sheet. In a couple of minutes, up after I UV the sheet, I'll be able to hold them up so everybody can see what I have glued to the paper here. Peggy, yeah, can that. you explain where you're putting the, the, the glue on the oh, yeah. feather? I can actually hold this up. There we go, very carefully. Oops, I just lost one of my wings. Hold on, let me go back with a little bit more glue here. I'll get it back in place. Yeah, it goes like that. Must not have put quite enough in there. Okay, now we'll give that another try. Here we go. Now, what I end up with is a piece of partridge parchment paper. It's for cooking and it's quick release, okay? What I did is I put these, I have both the, um, the badger is on the bottom then I've got the red one, okay? And then I put the glue right here where the feather meets and on the stem. Give it a couple of minutes and then you can just these peel off of here, okay? And then you can put them on the hook. You can also use rubber cement. Um, you can use fabric fusion, which is a rubber cement cousin made for, it's made for putting, uh, gluing pieces like hems and clothes and stuff like that. If you don't sew, you can just zip it right up there. All right, now we'll do the easy way. And I'll use the same hook as before. These hooks are not actually available anymore. Um, 
They were made by a company called Gaelic Supreme, and they were made in England one at a time through a little machine. And the guy that made them all actually died. And then the guy that owns Partridge, he bought the machine and the rights to it. And then he quit making them. They made someplace. I mean, no one today sits someplace and makes thousands of books every day, you know, twisting them around a jig and all that stuff. Now, this is a, uh, let's see, whoops, we can't quite see the label. It's a Whiting American Hackle, and it's a rooster saddle. The capes have a stiffer stem to them, and so they're a little bit harder to work with, okay? Um, let's see, where are we gonna find our feathers on this guy? We need two here. I just have to find four that match now. Two, oops, I got three, okay. The other ones will come from over here. We'll get that one odd guy. I'm a dance partner. Now, on this one, because we don't have to match two colors, we just have to line them up. And then I take this fluff off. It's a little bit long, but we can use it. Okay, and then I got the other two, should be close. Um, I'll see if I can show you how to pick them off a little bit closer. Uh, let's see. Put it together. One side is shorter than the other. Let's go here. There we go. Fixed. So the, the width is hopefully the same, but but you're being- Yeah, there. exactly. Let me see if I can, uh, hold on. Let me just take this pelt right off this cardboard. And we'll see if we can see this in this camera. Now uh, yeah, he's dyed a little dark. Um, if you look at it, you'll see these lines of little, this is where the feathers are attached to the, the skin. Okay, it comes down like a V. Okay, and then when it goes up, that's one row of feathers on this guy. Whoops, there we go, yeah. See these little lines of dots? Each one of those is a feather sticking into the skin. And um, if you fold it like so, you can find that line on um, this side of it. See, there's one right there. So everything on this side and on that side, it'll all match. It'll be the same length, the same width. It's like a twin effect, okay? And then as you get to the upper end, they get bigger and bigger. When I learned how to tie these, it was at a club. The instructor, Mike Martinique, he used to teach at his house every Saturday. And I used to go to some of those lessons for about 10 years worth. And I not only learned all the fine details of streamer tying, but I learned a whole new vocabulary. Um, <laughs> Since you've teased us about the uh, hooks that are no longer available, uh, yeah. the, the current makers uh, maybe of a similar sized hook. Yeah, that... they are. Actually, Partridge has the heritage line that's 9X. It's exactly, it's the same hook, actually, um, just not made in England anymore. Uh, Peggy, John Wright was asking on the building of the wing, is that two reds and two badgers, or is it one red and it's two It's one badgers? red, one badger. You can okay. actually, I've done, um, one streamer I do has six feathers, and then there's an eight feather streamer too, and those you kind of work up to. Uh, the first streamer I ever tied was a 9-3, which has a flat wing and then a vertical wing. It's um, like an olive flat wing, and then it has the black vertical that stands up. And so after that, the comment was made, I just tie anything, you know, go from there. Now, now I should warn you all with these UV lights, make sure you're not shining it on your fingers. Otherwise you'll be getting skin cancer bumps on your fingers when you don't want them. And yeah, that's the same UV that's the sunlight. Um, as a matter of fact, solar ease, I, I was in Idaho at one time tying an order and 
I just sat them out in the sun and they were cured in like five seconds all the way through. Now, let's see, white thread. Let's make this fancy fly here. Any questions on the wings? Because that's the part everybody gets stuck with. Determining your length. Oh, um, it actually should be, and you can measure this if you have like a ruler, it's the gap of the hook comes off the bend of it, okay? So say the gap of the hook is this much, then the it should come to about here on this vise, okay? And some people do put a line, some people measure them with a ruler, but I was told if I couldn't eyeball that, that I wasn't any good, so I try to eyeball it. So it is, it's the gap of the hook. Um, if you try to use your hook as a measuring device, it, everything works pretty good, I think. There we go. There we go. And let's get the peacock. Okay, we'll get our butt on there. Okay, let's see, let's do that. Wait a minute, I did that backwards, hold on. I got ahead of myself there. Let's put the blue in. Uh, that floss with the lighting yeah. looks very oh, yeah. light. Uh, it is, it's, you know what it is, the powder blue. Whoops, let me see if I can take the light off of it. Oh, hold on, let's shut this light off. Oh. Uh, it's the ceiling light that's making it so I could shut that down, I guess. <laughs> Not yeah. necessary. It's just you're using a very, very light shade. Oh, it's yeah. It's, um... all right. Now we go down. There we go. Got to make sure you keep them together. <laughs> hmm. There we go. Now do this. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. There we go. Now we'll put the button in here. Back. There we go. I appreciate the error and uh, the recovery. Uh, oh, so yes. That's better. You know, the whole, someone once told me when I could only knew how to tie three patterns, I volunteered to tie at the Marlboro Fly Fishing Show for our club booth. We had one lady out of 750 members, and that was me. And I was sitting there and first my thread broke and then this happened. And then I discovered, oh, this is easy. I can recover from this. And that was the one thing everybody took away from my demo was, wow, you recovered from that. You didn't panic or anything like that. So, well, panic never got anybody any place but in trouble, you know. So you just have to, like, be able to make the recovery without saying anything. Cool. All right. Now we'll get the body in there. That is a very light floss. Hmm. It's like half the color of the spool. Hmm. All right, number 10 right here. Okay, tie this in. Bring it up a little bit further. Now, let me get everything going here. See if I can, oh, there.
Peggy, you mentioned earlier on about uh, taking your time thread just ahead of your yeah. Rhythm. And, and yeah, I take it ahead about three to four wraps each time I go up there. And you're creating a, a bit of an angled ramp there. Yeah, to... you do. That's what you're, I call it the bed. You can call it the ramp. It's basically, it's a tie-in point for the wing. Because sometimes if you let, if you stop everything at once, like the floss, the tinsel, you got the rib, if you pile all that up and then you got to put your rib, uh, your wing on in front of that, you'll have a bump and it's like a ski slope. It makes the wing go shoot straight up. So by creating that ramp, you're, you're allowing the wings exactly. to position the way you want them. Then. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They want to lie along the hook. Now, let's trim this off. And then I tie a little half hitch right here, just run it in. What happens, I do that half hitch. That way, if every, anything gets loose, the, the, that tinsel doesn't spring off on me. Um, There's a family, well, it's a father and son that has written two books. One is on Carrie Stevens, one's on Herb Welch. And they have a third one that's on Stan Bogdan, the um, the real maker. And they also, they own Carrie Stevens' business. They went to do some research for the book and the guy that had bought the business from her sold him the whole business for a dollar. So it's... Um, but they've done several postmortems on these, especially the Carrie Stevens flies. And there's just gobs of glue all over the place on the front third of it. But there are half hitches between each section of the fly to keep it together. So I figure that's always a good, you know. And they were in the middle of another book when that happened. There we go. Now, one of the things about tying these now with the tinsel and the ribbing, you can change the size of that. Say you you started doing this and you didn't have any oval tinsel and your near, nearest shop is you know, a mail order or 100 miles away. You could just use a, a smaller flat tinsel or you could say use a silver, have a gold body with a silver ribbing on it. Looks really nice. You're basically just creating a little sparkle to catch the fish's eye. All right, now we're going to pick up these wings. There we go. Good. There. I'm going to do the back one first. Put that one. There we go. Now, is that there? Good. Let's get rid of that little. There. That's the way we like that. Now, I'm going to put a little dot of, have some real head cement here on the ends of the wings just to hold them in place. And this is what we used to use, the Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. And you just let it get really thick. This one is pretty thick. All right. Now I'm going to put my throat on after the fact. Yeah, the Hilliard's Carrie Stevens book is in about its third or fourth printing right now. It um, just keeps on selling every few years streamers become popular again and everybody wants to tie them so that they sell a whole bunch more i know we just got our copy peggy um apparently yes. some of the 
patterns have a golden pheasant crest as a tail. Which one is the standard with or without? Um, the let's see. Oh, I have the book right here. I can actually look it up. Um, the Gray Ghost has that. I know that. That's it. Mostly Carrie Stevens. The Welch patterns are a little bit simpler. They don't have as many materials. Whereas she thought everything was a dress hat, you know. There we go. That throat material is a hackle fibers. Yeah, dot. it's just a strung hackle. And I just pick a lot, the longer ones. Um, I have a whole bunch of this strung hackle that I bought from an estate sale. And uh, I usually Peggy, don't hear them. Yeah. Peggy, is there a reason you put the, uh, put the throat in after the wing on this one? I forgot to put it in first. Okay. It really does it well. Okay, if you put it in first, it helps your wings like tent a little bit and sit nice. If you put it in afterwards, you can fill in and cover any wild threads that you have holding the wing in. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah. And now we're gonna go to black thread. Yeah. And um. The other thing you can do too, if you have trouble setting your wings in, is take a little piece and you put like a false beard, have it stand up, okay? And it'll go in between. It'll keep the feathers separated and keep the wing lying nice and flat for you, straight up and down. There. there. Now we get the jungle cock out. There it is. There we go. Now we'll put this eye in there. Now, the other thing you'll see some people do, like this doesn't have a cheek on the side. There's usually, sometimes there's another feather. They'll glue the wing, the cheek, and the eye before they put it on the hook, okay? And I don't do that. I put my cheeks and my eyes on separately. That way, say you want to cock the eye up and change the angle of it a little bit. It's there. It's not all glued together ahead of time. And, um Yeah, all right. Let's see, it's a little bit different look. Let me hold this one up. You, you don't get that variation of the color where you've got the badger and the black, but it's pretty close. Now, when these feathers are wet, they'll be close to the same. Uh, there we go. Yeah, let me put the black on. Yeah. Now let's see, I'm gonna hold the book up for everybody. I think I can just hold it down here. 
Yeah, this is Herbert Welch. He actually, he's the creator of the Black Ghost. And then it has a bunch of patterns and it's actually a well-illustrated book. And the flies are nicely tied that's in it. So it um, this book and the Carrie Stevens book, by um, it's Graydon Hilliard, H-I-L-Y-A-R-D, and Leslie is his son who had to do all the tying for these books. And those are the really recommended books. So any questions? I, I just have to say how much I love that magnetic stand in the background. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. It's kind of like it's an engineer's delight. I like it because I don't lose my scissors, you know, and stuff like that. Now that I have you ever scissors. Consider using, do, do you ever consider using uh, just your white thread and then just mark it with a black marker? instead of changing thread at the end? You ever do that? I have, yes. As a matter of fact, before I discovered this black solar ease stuff for the heads, I used to use a magic marker. I fill in any little white spot showing through the black head and then put head cement over it. So it kind of, I guess it works either way. You know, it's like the difference. You can also do the body when you need a floss body, you can use, um, that, uh, oh gosh, uh, uni thread makes it the stretch floss. You can use that for streamer bodies too and just whip them on with a uh, bodkin. It's pretty quick, easy, and covers up all the mistakes. In regards to your magnetic tool stand, I'm not so sure I can't find something similar in the welding supply store. I think will... you probably can, yes. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I think because I think everything on here, the ideas came from the aircraft industry, you know, yeah. and that would be welding too. I cast it out and let it drift down, and then you strip it back and vary the speed of the strip, short or long, and let okay. usually get the fish when it's chasing it right near the end. Thank you. Or you control it if you do like a you know a ten extra long size two. Now, on this one, I forgot the tail, so we'll hide it. We'll keep that wing sitting down like that. <laughs> Any other yeah. questions for Peggy? Peggy, I can't tell you how much we've enjoyed your presentation tonight. Oh, good. Just, All right. just love it. Just love it. Well, um, <laughs> thank you. Oh, and where is Evelyn still there? I got your cards in the mail. I did a black ghost um, during the expo and Evelyn draws the flies that we tie when we do Woman Connect. And she sent me note cards made with my black ghost on it from the drawing oh, yes. she did. So, yeah. Oh, wait Move a over just a little bit in front of you. There you go. Love it. Oh, nice. There we go. Oh, cool. And yeah, no, there's all the directions, too. <laughs> I know. I was going to say pretty soon you can compete with the guy from South Africa that wrote the book. Before we yeah. move into the the tip this evening, funny things happen when you open your email sometimes. And today was no exception. Yeah. David Buckner from Mississippi sent me a Christmas fly that left me speechless, which is pretty hard to do. And um, let me spotlight David and he's going to show you his Christmas fly. I'm going to try to turn this around where we can see it. Oh, there my it gosh. Is. Cool. Look at that. <laughs> there is Santa on a surfboard. Is that what it is? That's a surfing Santa. Surfing yes, Santa. Surfing right, George. Santa. Oh, wow. Jesus. <laughs> he's he's, on, he's on a, a two alt 10 X XL carry. Yeah. Stevens hook. So oh, he's, wow. he's, nice. he's pretty darn big. <laughs> I like the way you've got his tummy bulging a little bit over his belt. Yeah, that, that's a hundred percent fly tie material. Even oh my a, gosh, the the hat's even a dragon tail. That red hat. Oh wow! Had to, yeah, I had cool. to dial that chenille. That there's eight shanks in his body. <laughs> Holy criminy! What is the what is the uh, dark glasses made out of? They're they're uh, foam with uh, UV resin. On. Wow, there you go. <laughs> oh, God, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night dreaming up all kinds of stuff. You must be somebody that wakes up in the middle of the night dreaming up stuff yourself. Yeah. That's right. I do. How long did that take you? Oh, uh, probably a few hours. Uh, I guess so. Holy cow. Yeah. Wow. Took a while. 
I actually had, it kept getting bigger. I had two smaller surfboards. Oh my made. gosh. <laughs> that, um, oh my I had God. to put aside. It got bigger and bigger. That, that one <laughs> surfboard is just about big enough for me there, David. <laughs> it is, Al. Hey. It is. Oh, David, thank you so much for being willing to share the Christmas spirit. <laughs> I, yes, think that's, I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. we're, getting, we're moving into the weekly tip, which is a little bit more on dubbing loops, or in fact, in this particular situation, it's, um, it's not the dubbing loop. It's a split thread material applicator. There's a difference. In, we'll get into at least our definition of what that, what that all means. There we go. That's the direction that we're going. That's the fly that I that I tied a, a few minutes before we went on tonight. And uh, it it's actually uh, really nothing other than some thread on a hook with a little bit of hackle. But we applied the hackle um, using a split thread application rather than uh, wrapping a feather around the hook. Well, that's even. What's that? That's so even. Yeah, it's uh, it's fairly even. One of the things that that uh, Peggy talked about tonight that with this with this all, in fact, I'll probably have to do it. Is your thumbnail becomes very important as you zoom in closer, and if there's a spot that's not quite filled in because of the way you apply this, you just kind of push down and twist one way or the other, right. and you can mm -hmm. redistribute exactly. the, the material around the hook. So let's see how this goes together. I'll just take that out. Throw that away, put a hook in the vise. I, I've tied this with every kind of feather under the sun. And tonight I'm just going to be using some of these um, uh, larger feathers off of a, off of a, um, a, gr uh, a grouse. And so I'll just take that on over to the tying area. I already got one selected so I don't have to be tearing and fuzz and all that stuff. Boy, I'll tell you what, the, lately the, Static electricity here has just been absolutely awful. So I've got this one that I've already prepared. You can see it's just oh, yeah. the, some of the fibers left is all I've got with a piece of stem. And we're going to put our body on. And I'll start by just applying some orange thread. Slight, slightly back, maybe a couple of eye widths back from the hook eye. And I'll just stop there, trim that off. <laughs> And you'll also, with this tip, you'll learn that uh, there's di different ways to, to put on your, your ribbing material. And that's what we're going to be doing right now, is I'm going to be doing a thread body or floss body. And this is kind of an oversized fly. I typically would use this kind of a body on a size of 16s and 18s. Anyway, trim that off. And I'm going to pull this off to the side. One of the things I was really sweating bullets over doing this presentation to you all is because you really need to get in here and work on your stuff. And you see how my hands are in the way? It's just, so I finally figured out I can kind of work off to the side and spin the bobbin a little bit and keep it, get it untwisted. Because what I want to do here is uh, wrap this back so I get kind of a floss appearance to this thread body. And we're just about to get to the front. When I get almost to the front, I'm going to stop, grab my whip finish tool, and apply whip finish that covers the last little bit. And using the Allen carry technique to tighten my thing with the with the tool, I still have a problem, Allen, winding the the note the the needle part up with the with the hook eye, but I'll get there, or maybe I'll never get there because I'm, I'm too old and jittery or drink too much coffee, one or the other. Anyway, so I'm going to advance my orange thread forward uh, to make my rib. And this is going to be my split thread. And um, this right here, this thread is, is, um, is 3-0. And the thread that I'm going to be splitting and using for the material is... Um, 6-0. Now we need to talk about this for just a moment. We've got the we've got the spool. We've got the distance from the spool 
to the start of the bottom of the barrel, if you will. We have the barrel, and then we have the thread that's sticking out. Okay, it's, I'm going to be referencing the distance between the spool and the bottom of the barrel is A. The thread that's inside the barrel is B. And the part that's out goes right to the hook is C, just so we kind of get our definitions down. And so right here, my bobbin is hanging kind of out of sight. I'll pull this up. And this distance here is three fingers. Maybe I can hold it. There we go. Three fingers, you can kind of see that. That's about how much I need. What's, what's really important about using split thread to apply materials is that you eliminate all, not just a few, but all of the twists in the thread. And the way you do that is by giving your bobbin a spin and just kind of working it back and forth until it flattens out. And what's really important is for a lot of people, they'll think it's enough for a dubbing loop, and it is, it's just perfect for a dubbing loop if the section C has all of the twists out of it or almost all of the twists out of it, because it doesn't make any difference if the sections B and A have twists in there, it won't make any difference because they're gonna put dubbing in it and twist it up anyway. But what's really important about this type of application is that you control that sections down there in A and B, because that twist will cause you some troubles. And you see what I'm doing here all along is it's down to the point now where I have an untwisted thread all the way down to the spool. And that's really important. Now, what I want you to see is I'm going to, can they see that Gretchen or do I have it blocked? It, it's good. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna split this thread. And you notice that I'm using a kind of a different bodkin and it's one by Wasatch, I think is who makes it. Somebody sent it to me and told me to try it out and I really, really love it for, for split thread stuff because it gets bigger and bigger and allows me just to easily slide my finger into the split thread and take that out. Just really, it's really handy to do that. I have just fell in love with that thing. Now I'm gonna take my material here, the hackle fibers off of that piece of, of um, partridge and I'm just gonna slip it right in there. Now I wanna let go of this and see if it twists and it doesn't, this is good. If it did twist, I'd have a problem because now I'm going to just wrap this around the hook and there we go. Now, after I get through trimming away the waist and finishing the head, we'll have a, a nice even application of material or hackle fibers. Now, what I wanna do is try not to burn my thread, but I'm gonna try to make a clean head on this thing. I mean, I'm supposed to be impressing you guys with a tip and I'll probably end up burning my thread in two. Okay, I, I think I've pushed the envelope just about as far as I dare. All right, get my hat foot finish tool out here. Put in a several turn whip finish. Trim that off. And now it's time to bring this forward. Beat it up a little bit. And let's look around and see if we've got a good application all the way around the hook or do I need to rearrange it? Nope, looks to me like I got a pretty good application. So this is a way for you to take any size feather and make any size hackle you want. That, that was tonight's tip. Any, any questions? questions? Oh, good job, Gretchen. You beat me to that. <laughs> Al, who makes the bobbin? I think you said it was, you thought it was uh, 
Wapsi, is that what you said? Uh, the, the, the bodkin. Or bodkin, I mean. The bodkin is made, I'm pretty sure it's by Wasatch. Oh, Wasatch. And um, I, I believe that's where it came from. It looks like the other tools that I've got, I've gotten from them, but it's, uh, I don't know where you get the darn thing. You'll have to look around, but it is absolutely phenomenal for doing any kind of split thread application, whether it's a application of materials or, or, or dubbing, which by the way, remember in dubbing, you don't need to take all those twists out. You need just enough twists out to be able to split the thread, put your dubbing in there. And of course it's going to spin up and that's fine. That's what you want it to do. So Al, do you have a particular type of thread? Cause I've heard that some unit thread doesn't split very well. Is that? Yeah, that, I've heard that too. And I think we talked about it last week or a week before anyway, I've been using probably more than 50 years. I've been using Danville and it, it will uh, lay out nice and flat and split real easy. I understand uni does it. Those of you out there using uni, somebody please pipe up and tell me if it's something that you can split real easy and I'm misquoting it. I, have trouble, I use a lot of uni thread and I have trouble splitting it. And I think it's because it's a twisted thread. It's, bonded. it's hard to get it flat. Got it. And, and, I, and I have no problems at all getting it flat with the uh, 140 and the 170 denier. Okay. Yeah, well, I, 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 I use I use the, uh, the the Griffin, and then the other one that works now is this new uh, Visus. The new Visus thread it it oh, yeah. flattens out really really well. Um, <laughs> another trick when you do that hackle, I try to to cut the hackle butt ends off as close as I can to the thread. And then I don't have that mess that you have to burn off. You, you can actually, it's almost like, like cutting the perfect uh, layback wing. You know, you cut it to, to, to length. You can do that with that. But the, the only way, it, but what I have a trouble with sometimes is the feather moving. So I found if I wax one side of that dubbing loop, it'll hold the, that hackle right perfect. And then I can cut, cut it as close to the thread as I can. And, I, and I've done that too, Jerry. It's um, yeah. the easiest and the slowest is the way yeah. I did tonight. Yeah, it was well, nice. I like that. If you're in a, if you're in a hurry, the dubbing wax and cutting close is is the one will get you get the job done quicker. Yeah, yeah uh, that looked that looked beautiful. Can you real, hear me now? I'm somebody asked yeah, a question. Al, I'm sorry. This little tool here is uh, made by Stanflow, and when I turn it, you'll see that there's a groove at at the top of that up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you push like this, there's a needle that comes up through that thing and splits your thread. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to use it on, on uh, UTC 70 denier. So, uh, you know, it can go with real thin stuff. Who, who did you say made that? It says on it, uh, S-T-O-N-F-O, -O, and I got it through Orvis. Well, everyone, we've had a great time this evening with all of you on Fly Time Friday with the BDs. Please join us again next Friday. But for now, it's a wrap. We'll see you next Friday. <laughs>